Hello, I'm TJ Gadget Man, and we're in Punta Cana. Welcome to Treasure Hunters. episode of Punta Cana, we metal detected the beach. This time we're going to metal detect the sea. We're going to go out and do three beach dives, each with one tank in shallow water at different stages. And on the fourth dive, we're going to just go out to the reef and explore some caverns, probably about uh, half a mile offshore. Daniel's flying dinghy gives a perfect overview of what everything will look like when we get down below. From the air, you can see the coral reefs, See the clarity of the water, you can see where people are, are snorkeling and diving. It was just a great way of looking at everything from the air. So we're looking at things from the air, sea, the land, I'm trying to cover it all. Well, lucked out, got my tanks. Day one, give it a shot. My idea is to try to hunt the beach in three stages. Go out to the 12 foot area, and then come into more where the wave action is. So 12 feet, I would call this a deep spot. A lot of people lose stuff, they can't stand here. They, they're they not gonna be able to swim down and get it. So, pretty murky stuff though, because it was pretty windy today. Went down here with my Excalibur. Visibility, I thought, would be a lot better than this, but it, it really wasn't. 12 feet of water, this should look like crystal clear. If you look carefully, you'll see coins just lying all over the beach. I didn't even really need the metal detector. I even brought up my scoop. I put the scoop away. Good look, they're right there. One there, one here. You just go pick them up. Pretty cool. Most of these are pesos or Russian coins. Probably about worth 10 cents to a quarter each. Just fan with your hand, you dig a pretty big hole and you can feel right in there and pick up anything hard. I picked up so many I had a hard time putting them in my pockets. Got a big bag. I kind of thought they would be buried a little deeper than this, but they really weren't. They were on the surface. I was expecting them to be sinking down, but they weren't. Day two, second tank. In a little bit closer, uh, thought I'd give it a shot. See if maybe I could find a little more than I did the first day. Still murky. You can see these little ruffles that the wave action does. You can dig a pretty darn big hole with uh, with your hands and then just reach in and feel around and pretty much do everything by feel. I'm showing you this video just so that you might get a sense of what it's like to be down here. It's like I said, not deep, but it's still pretty difficult to see and detect and you only have a certain amount of bottom time anyway, even you know at this shallow depth.
just crawl on the bottom, real easy diving. And pick up the coins just like that. I did end up having a uh, wetsuit on because even though the uh, air temperature is 80 and the water is probably warmer than 80, after about an hour you get cold. You can see the little eddy currents that you swim through down here at the bottom of the ocean. Keep low. Watch out of the boats. There's boats going above. You don't want to come up and find yourself a facing propeller. The other thing I ended up doing was uh, checking my compass bearings quite a lot so I didn't drift out into the uh, boating lanes. Uh, I had to make a course that was parallel with the beach so that I knew that I was in a swimming beach and didn't venture out past the ropes because you can get lost down here real easy. Even though it's shallow, it, it was really hard to see. It was even hard to see the surface at 12 feet. Coming in a little shallower, visibility gets worse. As you get down from the six to nine foot area, the sand slopes down at maybe like a 20 degree angle. It's real clean. And then there's this trough of debris of seaweed between where it's 10 feet deep and where it starts coming up to where people are swimming. In this debris, I found nothing but sunglasses. I found a scuba mask, that's a $45 mask. All this stuff just sort of follows this little trough of seaweed right down between the sloping here on your left and then the flat spot on the right here where it's deeper. This is uh, the slope and you can see the sand's a lot firmer, a lot harder, uh, a lot easier to detect. No debris here but uh, I didn't find anything here today. You'll also find a lot of trash in this spot. Anything light will kind of work its way down in here. For these dives, like I said, I didn't even bring my little scoop out. I already had too much with me, so just left that at home and brought a little diving net with me. And when you pick something up, you just put it right in your net. stuff on this heavier sand was down a little deeper. This stuff did settle down a little bit. You can hear the boats coming. They sound like they're right on top of you, but they may be like 100 feet away. It does make you want to stay down close to the bottom. The sound travels real well in the water and they could be far away, but you think they're there. Something. You were saying, how do you how do you dock the boats in the Dominican Republic? 
Huh? If you wait, I'm gonna tell you. You gotta wait for the boat to come in so I can show you. Uh, another boat coming? Yeah. Okay. I get uh, in about 10 minutes. Are you gonna stay around? I will stay around. But tell me how you do this here in Dominican. You put the palm leaves down? Exactly. We put the palm leaves down. The guy watch the people not to interfere on the way. And then that's the way we do it. This is much better. <laughs> So day four, we headed off with Kelvin, our dive master, to a popular location just off the lagoon in Punta Cana. Shallow dive, probably only 20 to 40 feet deep at the max. There were some really cool caverns that we explored. With two GoPro cameras, it was great to have different angles of the cave dives and stuff. So thanks again, Joey. It's always good to have a second cameraman down below. I didn't take a metal detector, I just wanted to go dive and I have a feeling I'm going to be back with a metal detector shortly. A couple local residents had informed me that they've been finding some gold and silver coins just off a reef south of this point near the airport. So I'd like to come back in the future and check it out.
about what you set out to find. It's about the journey and the adventure. For in every adventure, there is a find. And that find may be the memories and friendships made along the way. Three quarters of the coins seen here were found diving. The rest was found on the beach, including the gold and silver. I've been told in the past that many people have found up to as many as five rings hunting the beach and the water. Just didn't get lucky enough to find any this time. But as you know, that's not really what it's all about. This is TJ Gadgetman. Thanks again for watching and happy hunting.